Monster Hunter World has had a massive resurgence this year thanks to the announcement of Monster Hunter Worlds over a month ago, bringing both new and veteran players into the fold once again. But what about this specific game makes it so beloved? And what caused the series to have such a large, somewhat dormant community? The Monster Hunter franchise, published and developed by Capcom, spans almost 20 years and 4 console generations, practically touching every console that has existed since the PlayStation 2. To simplify a very long history, the early, more handheld oriented games were extremely popular in Japan, which favoured mobile gaming. But it wasn't until the series targeted popular consoles with Monster Hunter World, did the franchise really begin to take off in the West? This makes World Deep Bridge to Western markets Capcom needed for the series, in a way turning it into their golden child. But what makes World so good? Well, it's pretty much the complete package. A modern game that is not only very fun to play, but also has a ton of content to explore and things to learn. The game has an absurd amount of depth, potentially thousands of hours worth of gameplay thanks to its weapons, which each play so radically differently that they're enough to justify individual playthroughs. My first playthrough of World with the Greatsword lasted me over 170 hours before I finished, and that's just one of 14 weapons, each with their own playstyle and movesets. The game has a really solid sense of progression through its equipment tree, and acquiring materials for upgrades and whatnot is, for the most part, not that grindy. There's very little impeding you from the start of the game to the end, which is always appreciated. To put things simply, it's a really solid game, but why does it currently have so many people playing it almost six years after release? Well, I think it's the result of three different things. The announcement of the new game coming in 2025, Monster Hunter Wilds, a very well-timed Steam sale after the announcement, making World the cheapest it's ever been to own, and the reception to the game that came after World, Monster Hunter Rise. Rise is a very interesting case. It's a mainline installment and shares a lot in common with its predecessor, but if I use the phrase switch port, you might understand where there might be some issues. The game was made with the Nintendo Switch in mind, and was ported over to PC later. And while the game is certainly not banned by a long shot, the technical limitations of the Switch mean that the game lacks a lot of the details found in the previous game. It also radically changes a lot of the mechanics found in World, and hits more of an arcade style that split players on which game they preferred. In the game's defence, it does make a lot of important improvements over World, and is generally a smoother experience. In a way, these differences mean that Rise doesn't fill the traditional role of a sequel, and once the hype for Wilds came around, and people decided to hop back onto the series, they mostly picked World. I think this outcome is also partly because the game was twice as cheap as Rise during the Christmas sales. I'd like to know what you guys think though, why did people really choose World over Rise in your opinion? Regardless of the reasons, the game has found itself pushing into six digits again. Capcom even did a mini-series of news posts, guiding new players through the early game and giving useful advice. I doubt it will hold these numbers forever, but it's really cool to see a game series beloved by its fans come back to life like this. Even if it trolls me. Endlessly. Oh.